technically the notion of AI is really about a constellation of machine learning, natural language processing, reasoning. But for me, there's something really interesting in what it means to be human in a world of artificial intelligence and algorithms and chatbots. And I'm really interested in the kind of the tension between the technology and the humanness. We hear AI and I think we imagine it's somewhere down the road, but the reality is it's already all around us. To paraphrase William Gibson, as always, the future is already here, it's just unevenly distributed. Same with AI and all the manifestations it will take. Artificial intelligence is gonna be woven into the fabric of our daily existence. It will be inside things that we never touch or see or inter interact with, but it will still impact our lives, whether it's about knowing about the weather, stock market, your skin cancer screening, there'll be all these places where you are touched by AI, but you don't necessarily think of it as being that. My favorite example about this at the moment around big data and analytics is actually about bees. Intel and the CSIRO, the Commonwealth Scientific Industrial Research Organization, have partnered to put RFID tags on bees. And there are 50,000 bees who have little tiny RFID tags glued on their backs, buzzing around hives in nine different countries. And part of what they started to be able to track was why did hive collapse happen? How do you think about environmental predation? How do we think about the constellation of activity inside hives? Similarly, when you think about how cancer is diagnosed and thought about, for instance, multiple clusters of breast cancer, inside each cluster, there are different responses to diagnosis, to medication and to treatment. You can type an individual's DNA, read it against those clusters, work out which cluster they're in and start to precision modify treatment for them. So imagine a world in which for one particularly deadly form of cancer, we now have a computational potential for solving it. If you can start to use technology and data and data analytics to start mapping the world differently, you start to be able to imagine different solutions, you start to see problems differently. And on its best days, that's what this will be. And it will be amazing. And it doesn't surprise me that Intel's in the middle of that conversation, right? I mean, you know, when Gordon Moore wrote his paper about Moore's Law before the company was even started, he was imagining a world of constant innovation. It's a company that was built on an idea. That idea is that computation and compute will be better generation on generation, that every iteration will be better than the one before. The company that Gordon Moore and Andy Grove and Bob Noyce built it invented compute version number one. I cannot imagine it doesn't want to be in the middle of building it out the second time around because everything we learnt from that first nearly 50 years is what's going to be instrumental in the next 50, right? It's just the medium is slightly different.